It's time for Defending and Commending the Faith with Joe Mott, inviting the atheist, agnostic, and skeptic to examine for themselves the evidence for the Christian faith. We are all limited by what we do not know and by the things we think we know but are not true. Dr. Joe Mott earned his Ph.D. at LSU and was a distinguished math professor at Florida State University for 38 years, helping to write three math textbooks and authoring over 30 research articles in math. He is now the host of this radio program, Defending and Commending the Faith. Here is Joe Mott. Hello to everyone. Welcome to the program. Today I want to discuss words and the notion of linguistic thievery. I'm going to have to make some political comments, so bear with me, please. As Red Skelton used to say, quotes, I cause them the way I seize them, end quotes. Let's begin with this question. What is the importance of words? Does it matter whether we call someone an illegal alien or an undocumented immigrant if the person has violated a law to enter this country? What's the difference between a Christmas tree and a holiday tree? Isn't all this just a matter of semantics? Semantics is related to the meaning of words in a language. Without words, we would have chaos. Words shape how we think. They color how we view the world. They highlight how to discriminate one thing from another. And they are absolutely necessary to convey to others what we desire. The problem is, we are living in a time where lots of words are being redefined. And we can't communicate freely if we don't understand what words mean. No one appreciates the value of words better than the political left. Leftists know that words matter. But here is the fly in the buttermilk, so to speak. The left establishes itself as the language police that determines whether your language is or is not politically correct. But along the way, the left has become, quotes, a corrupt cop, in quotes, because it is engaged in linguistic thievery. The term linguistic theft refers to the hijacking of the ordinary meaning of a word, changing its definition and then using the new meaning as a tool for political propaganda. The left may describe their behavior with the weak word euphemisms, using soft words selected to sugarcoat harsh realities, so as to make these harsh realities easier for the public to swallow. But these soft words are dangerously insidious. Their sole purpose is to deceive you and to shame you if you resist the thievery of the former meaning of the word. The examples are endless. There's a new word, linguistic theft, nearly every week. Allow me to give a few examples. Race discrimination in hiring and college admissions is refashioned as the much nicer sounding, quotes, affirmative action, in quotes. Who would ever oppose an affirmative action? Global warming, which can be measured and challenged, has morphed into, quotes, climate change, in quotes, which means essentially nothing because the climate is always changing. When Barack Obama became president, George Bush's war in Afghanistan suddenly transformed into the far less ominous and threatening, quotes, overseas contingency operation, end quotes. 
That's one way to try to end a war. Just rename it. In the make-believe world of political leftist language, young criminals have become, quotes, youth deprived of justice, end quotes. Government spending becomes an, quotes, investment, end quotes. If you're wanting to keep more of your hard-earned money, the left describes that practice as greed. The government taking more of someone's money is characterized as them paying their fair share. Opposing a Democrat in the White House is labeled obstruction. Opposing a Republican in the White House is renamed resistance. The left censors opposing views in the name of tolerance, and it labels all non-left views as, quotes, hate speech, end quotes. Consider the ongoing battle over personal pronouns. Whether to call a man who thinks he's a woman, he or she. Very few people in the country suffer from gender confusion, but the political left has been responsible for investing countless sums of money, time, and energy to make everyone refer to some men as she and some women as he. Why? Is it because the left is so compassionate? Or is it more likely because so much of the left's cultural agenda is about fomenting turmoil? I think it is the latter. Most often, the left simply negates the entire meaning of the formal word. Take social justice, for example. The ordinary meaning for justice is getting what you deserve without favor. Social justice means getting what you don't deserve because the left says they think you should be favored because of what the left deems as appropriate. Here's one word we hear a lot of these days, my truth. The truth has always meant that which corresponds to reality, regardless of any individual's feelings or perceptions. My truth is how someone perceives things, regardless of what the facts really are. But what about, quote, same-sex marriage, in quotes? Throughout history, in every culture, marriage has been the union of husbands, men, and wives, women. But same-sex marriage is the union of men with men or women with women. It is most certainly not the union of husbands and wives. Once the phrase same-sex was placed before the word marriage, that is, once the definition of marriage changed, the b debate changed. The debate suddenly became about, quote, marriage equality, end quotes. With this new construal of marriage, it was asserted that it was an act of bigotry to limit marriage to husbands and wives. The horrendous practice of partial birth abortion is now reclassified as pro-choice. It seems to me that when a person has no rational argument in opposition to my avowed stand against same-sex marriage or abortion, the left resorts to name-calling. When I was a young man, I was classified as a wasp, white, Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Hillary Clinton labeled me as deplorable. I think Biden would call me a MAGA lunatic. Let me now discuss the new meaning of tolerance, for its meaning has changed from what it has always meant. Thanks to the political left, the word tolerance now means the opposite of what it once meant. To be tolerant today simply means you agree with the politically left-wing positions, 
That's all, all it now means. When you differ with the left on any subject, the people who claim to be tolerant, instead of attacking your position, they now attack you. They label you as sexist, intolerant, xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, bigoted. If that name calling fails, there's always the ever popular quotes hate speech in quotes or quotes racist in quotes. This is obviously not tolerance. This is blatant intolerance. Your accusers are guilty of doing exactly the same thing they're accusing you of doing. Talk about hypocrisy. That is an example of what my mother would say, quotes, the pot calling the kettle black, end quotes. Here is what the political left is missing. In order to be genuinely tolerant of someone, you first have to disagree with them since you don't tolerate people with whom you agree. The classic definition of tolerance means the willingness or ability to tolerate while recognizing and respecting others' beliefs and practices without sharing them. Notice the element of disagreement is key to tolerance. Without it, true tolerance is not possible. This is critical. We don't tolerate people with whom we agree. We're on the same side. We only tolerate people with whom we differ, yet still choose to treat them decently and with respect. This vital ingredient of real tolerance is completely missing in the politically correct left-wing version. Nowadays, if you differ with others on culturally sensitive issues like sexual orientation, same-sex marriage, religious beliefs, or abortion, you're labeled intolerant no matter how you treat the people. Greg Kukul, the author of Tactics and the Story of Reality, the joint author with Francis Beckwith on relativism, and the president of Stand to Reason, opines, quotes, the left says all behaviors and ideas have equal value, that no behavior or idea is any better than any other, but they don't act that way. Tolerance is a one-way street for the left. Openly declare that sex differences are real, as Harry Potter novelist J.K. Rowling did, and see what happens. You'll be called transphobic by the left. The same thing happened to legendary tennis star and feminist Martina Navratilova when she said it was unfair to women to have to compete against trans athletes. That is, athletes who say they identify as female, but are biologically male. Kukul says, quotes, I thought according to the left, all ideas have equal value. So why are J.K. Rowling and Martina Navratilova suddenly called haters? Quotes, he answers, Quotes, because the left doesn't believe its own rhetoric, end quotes. Kukul continues, quotes, what the left has done is cleverly redefine tolerance to mean agreement with leftist views. Tolerance no longer means treating people with civility and respect even when we disagree with them. It means not disagreeing with the left. That's how, in the name of tolerance, the left shuts down all disagreement. It defines any contradiction of leftist views as intolerant. But not only is disagreement not intolerant, it's morally 
and logically essential. Think about it. All ideas, all behaviors are not equally valid. Some are better, some are worse. And discussion and disagreement and debate are how we sort out the good from the bad. Civilization depends on it. The abolitionist movement in America believed its arguments were better than pro-slavery arguments. They were. Anti-communists believed freedom was better than communism. It is, in quotes. I would add, American conservatives believe small government is better than big government. I agree. I also believe capitalism is better than socialism. Why? Because capitalism gives every person an opportunity to grab a piece of the pie. Socialism's goal is communism, and communism has a bad reputation because of all the deaths in the 20th century. Allow me to end this episode by reminding you, exercise daily, walk with God. Thank you for listening to Defending and Commending the Faith with Joe Mott, a production of Wave 94 Radio in Tallahassee, Florida. If you have any questions or comments for Joe, please forward them to Doug Apple at Wave94 at this email address, dougapple at wave94.com. And be sure to join us every Monday evening at 6.45 p.m. on Wave94 and subscribe through your favorite podcast app, Defending and Commending the Faith with Joe Mott.